Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, brought to you by the experts at Maryfield Garden Center. Join us as we discover beautiful plants, new trends, and exciting ideas for your landscape. So let's get growing together. Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing out the best in your garden. Good morning, and a beautiful morning it is. Yes, it is. We're <laughs> ready for this beautiful day. <laughs> I'm Diane Hawthorne, and this is my colleague, Peg Beer. And good morning, everyone. And we're here on this Easter weekend. Um, Debbie's a little under the weather this morning. We just got the call this morning, so we hope for, that she's feeling better. Yes. Poor thing. So, anyway, to get out and enjoy the, the season. Absolutely. So, today we're going to introduce you to some um, plant combinations, and we certainly have some plants at the garden center. They have been coming in, and yes. what gorgeous product. Um, there's so many possibilities, and today Peggy, who is the master at the container garden, is going to show you some traditional um, containers and how to create those, as well as how to create combinations. Um, Peggy? Absolutely, we will. This is actually a picture taken at the Fair Oaks location, and we are literally filled with gorgeous color, which we are all starved for at this moment, you know? And hanging baskets, this doesn't even show the number of baskets. I, I lovingly say, we are the hanging basket capital of the world because there's such diversity there. And I have a few today to share with you. But it isn't just sharing the fact that we have all this color and have all the diversity, but it's, there are so many questions. What can I use for shade? What can I use for sun? And what goes well together? And so that's really what the show is focused on today is I'll give you some ideas. Uh, I'll be going into our virtual garden and, and showing you some of the things that I've done in the past. And um, that's today's show. And really getting that advice and expertise makes such a difference throughout yes. the entire season. You'll have such a successful season if you come in and get that expertise. Well, it helps a lot, and we've got some very good people. And you know, you've got a couple of things over there. I'm, I'm pushing, of course, heavily, using all this wonderful color in containers today, but this is a container too. It just doesn't have any roots on it, okay? <laughs> and I think it's spectacular because it just says all those Easter colors that everybody looks forward to. And this weekend we have them at all three locations. We have um, cut flowers. Normally we don't carry them regularly at the Maryfield location, but we do this yeah. weekend. And these baskets are just exquisite. They're just full of beautiful natural things and a few little ornaments tucked in you could add a bow anything to make it um, special for your um, table or any or just the way it is it's just gorgeous okay. so we just have those and, and we have um, bunches as well that are just wonderful just Love pull the them out stick them in the vase this. and you're you're good to go there but so such the fun. girls are doing a great job I know really. Tina has really been working Marie, her way yes. and she does such a beautiful job I know yeah, they do they does. really really do mm -hmm. all right we have some announcements today on our um, seminars and I want to get this right now Saturday <laughs> um, April 19th at 10 a.m. that's today all right we're um, going to Gainesville and the magic of Min miniature gardens with Linda Brining that should be a fun one. Oh yes. my goodness. Everybody loves those miniature gardens. And we're going to be talking about those next week on the show too. Right. And I was out yesterday and the miniature gardens look spectacular mm -hmm. out on the lot. They're just, you know, in such good form. And um, so that should be fun and exciting and, and very informative. Um, next Sunday, April 20th. No, uh, no not that's next, tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow Easter. Thank already, you. Already, already. Uh, yes, tomorrow, um, April 20th at 1 p.m at our Gainesville location. We're um, having the introduction to cooking with herbs, and this is gonna be new. Regina's gonna do it. Regina Lancel oh, from Regina the- is just Fair. so talented. She's gonna Whatever Regina job. loves, you're gonna <laughs> love too, because she is gonna just, she's, she's just wonderful. She, her enthusiasm is just contagious. And now, next week, okay, um, exciting perennials, and this is an exciting seminar here. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday afternoon, we're gonna have Andre Viette, from mm -hmm. Fishersville. Yes, he was a good friend of yours. Yes, usually comes up every spring, and yes, we've been 
very, very good friends for, a uh, long time. for many, many years. Yes. He and Claire are fantastic people, and we're very fortunate that he comes and shares his his talents and, and uh, knowledge with us, but that will be in the afternoon because he has a radio show that he does all morning. So next, yeah. that's next yeah. Saturday afternoon, and then we'll have the roses on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yes. If, if you're interested in growing beautiful roses, we're going to have a seminar for that on Sunday. So um, the other thing that we wanted to make you aware of, very exciting, is um, we have extended Sunday hours now at Maryfield Garden Center for the rest of the spring season. Now tomorrow, Easter Sunday, we're going to be opening at 8 a.m. and we'll be open until 6 p.m. And then after that, on Sundays, we'll be 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So those extended hours should help us, um, you know, make it more convenient for you to come in, all right, and shop on Sunday with those earlier and a little later extended hours. Peggy's moved over here and she's going to show us some, some more um, baskets over here at the door. As I said to you, we're the hanging basket capital of the world. And I have some really unique ones. I, if the camera's going to need to come in because this is really unique. We have in the past grown gorgeous hanging baskets and standing baskets in these cones that are so attractive. But we had uh, a new supplier come in last week, and they have made it easier to transport these with the little wire form that you can sit it in to transport it. And you're always looking for things that are for sun or things that are for shade. And this particular one is begonias, which would love some afternoon shade. Fantastic one. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here... Beautiful petunias. Take it over. <coughs> oh, okay. Here. <coughs> I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Diane. Yes. Show them the begonia. The begonia. Okay, I'll show the begonia here. Peggy's asking to show the begonia here. All right. Yes. If you here. can follow over there. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I've lost my voice. I That's think all right. It's the fine. pollen of the flowers. A little, a little <laughs> pollen once in a while. That's getting better. There All right, are. there we are. It's on you now. We've got a begonia here in a hanging <laughs> basket. And <coughs> these things are just full of blooms um, and in such good form so early in the season. And that will continue um, to produce that beautiful color. That color just matches everything. Beautiful, beautiful color. And we have those in reds, pinks, yellows, whites. And again, for so early in the season, this is just spectacular. So you'll have to come in and see our hanging basket. Um, and some of the begonias are in combinations with other things in baskets. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back on Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. Those are those traditional Easter lilies, such a symbol of Easter <coughs> to so many of us. Um, we've gotten um, Peggy a, a throat lozenge here, and we hope she'll be okay over here. She's going to try out over here at the chroma screen. We're going to jump over to Peggy in her virtual garden. And yes, we are in the virtual garden, and hopefully my throat will stay. I apologize for that. Very unexpected, but uh, it's the pollens, I suppose, in, in the air at this time of the year, plus the fact that I load my car with all these wonderful flowers, and so it's in close contact. So I apologize, but we'll continue. Flowers are so important in our lives. We have so many people coming into the garden center that are just looking for the beauty. And this has been a very different winter, and so we're all looking for that. And containers are such an easy way to do it, with balconies, with decks, out in the garden, depending upon the size of your space. It may be only your only garden, or it can be within the garden. Here is my own backyard. I have used containers over the years to trial this an Easter situation, which we've got coming up tomorrow. A wonderful mixture of different kinds of plants here. I'm going to have to reach for this lozenge. <coughs> Again, my apologies. 
Here they're banked because groupings of containers can be very, very effective. Just one large one as a focal point or groupings here. I've used fern because green is always good to show off the colors of the other things. There are begonias here. This is a shady situation. It gets a lot of dappled light, but there are a lot of flowers that actually thrive here. There's purple terrenia, which is a good one for shade. There's begonias. There's so many different kinds of begonias, and I'm going to showcase those on this show today because so many people need color in the shade to replace the regular impatiens that we're still not selling because of the diseases with them. We are selling New Guineas, which are not affected. Let's go to the next pictures, please. This one was a couple of years ago on my patio, which is down from the deck. There's a beautiful weeping red bud in a large container. It's been in that container for three years now, and I probably will lift it out and loosen the outside roots in a couple of weeks and put a little fresh soil and put it back into the container, and it'll be fine for another three years. Here are New Guinea impatiens. This is an area that gets morning sun and dappled light in the afternoon. New Guinea impatiens. You'll see the close-up of this further. There are a different kind of begonia, the bonfire begonias here. And the sort of bright look that here is actually um, the fragrant geraniums, okay? And over in this area is the dragon wing begonia, which is about, can be two, two and a half feet tall and is just, it blooms all summer, it's so easy, mixed with some other beauties that I think I have some closer shots of this coming up. So let's, let's look at those because I've tried to concentrate on this particular group of plants because it's so diverse and it serves those purposes for the part shade environment. Here you can see how gracefully that dragon wing begonia is in that container and it is mixed with some fern and other cascading plants. Often you say something that cascades, a spiller, something that fills in, and something that thrills. And um, this one, <laughs> the thriller is actually the filler too, okay? And then again, a closer thing of this beautiful variegated form in the leaves of this wonderful New Guinea impatience. And then there's a vine that is reaching up and growing through the camellia that is behind this. It's called solanum. And it's, it's a beautiful variegation. It's gr not grown for the flowers, but for the variegation. Let's continue with some of these because I do want you to get a, at least a quick look of this. This is an overview of those things. And added to that, in containers, boxwood are fantastic. A lot of things suffered this winter. We've had a lot of winter damage, but all of my boxwood in containers came through beautifully. And the next one, please. Here, again, a closer view of all these beautiful plants. Let's roll through a couple of these. Okay. You could see here with the different, the old heritage geraniums, beautiful color in the leaves. And the flowers are not as big and bold as most of the geraniums. They're very airy and I think very attractive too. You can roll through this again. It's wonderful to have color out where you are entertaining or where you just sit. This is my outer patio and oftentimes the family or friends that come over walking through the garden will sit down and just enjoy this area. And the front part of this, because you can have variation. 
the front part of this little patio gets five hours of sun a day. And if you get five hours of sun every day, you can grow almost anything. It's the afternoon shade that the shade plants like. And they are located in the back of this area, which gets dappled light. And so I really have a lot of satisfaction with growing a variety of plants here. You can see that the begonias, the dark leaf begonias, one big red and a whopper are two magnificent dark leaf begonias that love the sun or shade and that's a definite advantage. We have a lot of coleus that will take full sun or part shade. And then there are a few varieties of coleus that don't like full sun. And so this is one good reason for all of the wonderful people that we have there being able to assist you with some of those selections. And then you have a gorgeous, you'll see this one again, a plant that cascades. So it's one of the spillers. This is Dorothy Anthus, and it has a fun little red flower, but it's grown for its variegated leaf in combination with the lotus that is growing out of here. And the bold leaves of Hucora, which is a perennial, or Hucorella, which is a cross between Tiarella and Hucora. So you'll go to the perennial section for some of these beautiful plants also. I think we have one more in this segment to share with you. Isn't this great? Here is that Dorothy Anthus that I was telling you about. It's a great spiller. It can be considered a filler also, but look how it contrasts with the lotus, and you'll see a gray dichondra that's also a spiller later. Petunias. The world is filled with petunias right now, and these are of the uh, surfina and super uh, tunias. They are sterile, they don't need pinching, and they're fantastic. Coming out of that is a wonderful strobilanthus as the thriller that goes up. There's more to share, there's more thoughts on these plants, and I think perhaps the throat is under control, so we'll be back in a moment. With the little fear of the uh, voice going out on me, I forgot to tell you, and here we are. Grab your hat, because everybody needs a hat, okay? Grab your gloves, and let's go gardening. It's time to go gardening. What a fun thing. I, I walked through the garden center because the girls have such lovely things inside, and they had this really sweet little scarf. Uh, on, on the hat, and I said, oh, that will match my outfit. That can be my Easter bonnet, okay. Maybe a little fancy for uh, going out in the garden. It would be my dream that I looked like that going out in the garden, but I've got news for you, I don't, <laughs> okay. But the hat is very important, and the foxglove, colorful things that they are, okay. Let's talk about plants. I've shown you some of the things that were in a more shady area. Now I would like to show you transitioning to a sunnier area. This doesn't get eight hours of sun a day, but it gets at least six hours of sun. And if you get six hours of sun a day, you can grow plants that love the sun. I talked about spillers. One of the perfect spillers is the gray dichondra. And with that dichondra is the lotus that we spoke about earlier. There's, this is the little round leaf, and this one is the little airy leaf, which is a wonderful contrast. Spilling out also with a contrast of color is the selenum. And then rising out of the top of that to pick up the gray color, because color pickup is important. 
to pick up the gray color is a, a curry plant, not the curry that you cook with, but a curry plant. But there are a lot of gray plants. Dusty Miller is one of them. And then the begonias to give you that bright red that's coming out of the top of this. And look how this grew through the season. It was truly spectacular. Let's continue through with some of these. There's certainly some repetition of the use of these plants because they're so incredibly beautiful. Look at this dichondra, and these are large hanging uh, wall units over the deck, over the rail, window boxes, all the same kind of thing. And you have the Penicetum rubrum, which is coming up from this, and that's lovely in any large container. Other fillers that are in here. The pickup, and a very good pickup for um, this is the Wandering Jew that can take sun or shade and then other things that are falling down out of this, like petunias or the cascading vinca. But look at the repetition. Isn't that, I'm going to step all the way back. Isn't that lovely? I think I have a close-up of this one next. Nope, another one. This is okay. The colocations. All the colocations are not in yet because they like really warm weather, but keep this in mind. This is a smaller one, and there are some huge ones. And we got in some lovely bananas yesterday. Again, look how this cascades out of this. And this is that either big begonia or whopper begonia. They're almost identical with the wonderful cascading grasses. The small grasses are really, really good for this kind of thing. This one is Hakanakloa. And the next one, please. Now you see it cascading with another begonia. We are, there are so many begonias and they're so different. This one likes some afternoon shade. The large leaf often indicates that they enjoy shade. The Rex begonias. If it never bloomed, it would be magnificent because the leaves are so colorful. With a pickup here of New Guinea impatiens, perhaps, or the begonias. But isn't that incredible? Let's go to the next one. Again, we've got the Dicundra with Plectranthus coming out of this and geraniums. Geraniums are very useful plants and there are a lot of different geraniums on the market. There are those that like shade in the afternoon, those that take full sun, and now some crosses between the two that are very interesting. The next one, please. I think we've seen this one. Did we have any more in this segment? Ah, ah, yes. We have this wonderful bonfire begonia. And there will be coming in a couple of new ones that are very similar to this. But check out the begonia section. You'll be excited. There are things that I haven't even begun to have time to try. But this one is very different. And it, it really prefers some afternoon shade. Dappled light all day is perfect. I think we have maybe another one or two. Selenia begonias. We're talking begonias now because a lot of these begonias will take full sun and a lot will do well in shade. Here we're back to that deck that has dappled light throughout the day and Lobelia does well here. I use a lot of blue containers back on this deck and that Lobelia picks up the color of that blue container. Another plant that I use in this area is Terenia. So do remember, Terenia will grow with a lot of sun but prefers a little afternoon shade. A nice color pickup to unite. Here are some of the blues that are here, but that unites the blue in the container. And these are Selenia begonias. 
which is the begonia that Diane shared with you in the first segment when I lost a little control with the voice. They bloom in sun or shade, and they bloom all summer. Let's go through a couple of these, okay. Here again, we're showing you the gray plants that enhance the others. We have verbena, a wonderful, wonderful plant for full sun or part sun with petunias. A lighter purple with a darker purple is very complimentary and always looks good with gray. As I said, this is a curry. There are other grays there, and Dusty Miller is a fantastic gray. And Angelonia, this is another wonderful plant that blooms all summer long. And over here, I'm going to step back again, is Heliotrope, incredibly fragrant and beautiful. I think we have one more in this segment. Let's look at that. And guess what? It's Angelonia. This is a purple Angelonia. It's beautiful in the ground because this one is about two, two and a half feet tall and is great as all by itself in a container or mixed with others. You can see slight close-ups on each side and it's shown with some of the sweet potato vine. This is just a sampling of the wonderful plants that are available to combine to give you such beauty in containers. We're going to talk about a few others and how to. We will be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. Peggy's here today with us, and we're talking about getting started on your container gardens, and now's it's the time. It's time to do it. Oh. Tomorrow's Easter. We all need this incredible color. Yes, we've had a challenge with the weather, but you know, the beauty of these containers is should we have some cold nighttime temperatures, and that's what we're concerned about, and hopefully we're not going to. After all, we're the latter part of April now, which normally is pretty much free of frost. But containers can be dealt with. You can cover them. And, and we really have wonderful things like the harvest guard, which is a very lightweight thing that you can put over your containers or anything else that you need to. And we'll talk more about this in use in the vegetable garden perhaps next week. Right. But this is a wonderful thing to have. The other thing is just a lightweight bed sheet. Yes. If you should, but God willing, this is not going to be a problem. But with all these hanging baskets and these other things, they're very easy to just slip down and take inside. You know, all of my family certainly expects their grandmother to have mother and grandmother to have this beauty on the deck. They are very, they love to take pictures. Yes. And um, they, they're looking for these uh, picture opportunities. And so I will be sitting these thing. I haven't had time to put them in, but I'm just going to sit these gorgeous baskets in the containers. And hey, they're not gonna know whether they're planted or not. And then I'll plant them next week. So that's the beauty of hanging baskets. They can be hung or they can be planted in a container. And you've got instant gratification. So and that's beautiful. worth a lot. <laughs> uh, and you're going to talk to us about a, a few different plants that yes, really do well and excel. Those in that excel for me, and, and it's only the tip of the iceberg, but let's run through these pictures rather quickly. The colors that are available in Million Bells, proper name is Calabracoa. They're like a small petunia. The colors are are just fantastic and there's a lot of new varieties many of which I have not had the opportunity to try but they're they're beautiful here's one nice uh, contrast of color that looks good think about that when you're making your selection the, and then the form of that plant too where the way it cascades and grows into any environment is yes it, it's a wonderful it can be the filler or the spiller That's right. and then the petunias I mix these 
because the small size and the one filler or a color pickup, the picture that you saw previously would go beautifully with these petunia colors. And then the next one, this is again the combination similar to the one of the pictures I showed you earlier. The Dorothyanthus, the variegated, uh, almost succulent like foliage that's coming out of that with the contrast of the texture and color also of the lotus vine. The beautiful petunias that has a contrast of the lighter purple with the darker purple. And then showing just a tiny bit at the top of the screen is another all-time favorite of mine and the hummingbirds. I can't have a garden that doesn't have the Garten, Garten Meister Fuchsia. It is a hummingbird magnet. And the next one is Terenia. Wonderful plant for shady afternoons, particularly. The following one goes back to the need for sunshine. And it, in the next picture, there, a big container filled with geraniums and filled with something that looked like baby's breath and it is euphorbia and in the following picture is a close-up of that one these new geraniums are lovely too just caliente is is one of them okay but all the geraniums mix so well with this euphorbia and I think we have a couple more pictures, don't we, Diane? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, okay. we do. Yeah, I think we have three more. Okay. Ah, wonderful. Lantana. This is as hardy as it gets. Just keep the flowers snipped away so the seeds don't form, and it'll bloom till frost. It's wonderful. Mixed with the coleus. Oh, my, the coleus are just incredible. So many colors available. And in the following picture... I want to remind you that the New Guinea impatiens have not been affected by the problems that the regular impatiens have. And now we have the sun patients, which is a New Guinea that loves full sun. Um, some of them prefer shade in the afternoon. All of them will take a lot of sun if they get adequate water right now. Okay. And then I think there's one more picture of a magnificent plant. This is a great one too, Diane. Beautiful. Those, those co the coloration there is just incredible. And then the, the way it fills in, just gorgeous. This is like a Scovola, and it will take full sun or part shade. And now it is available not just in this beautiful bluish lavender, but it comes in yellow and it comes in white wow. and it can be all by itself, which it is in this container, or it can be a part of a com combination. So wow. there are so, so many beautiful plants. Mm -hmm. And we have, I know I, I work at the um, Fair Oaks location, and we've had so many beautiful things come in from so many different suppliers that we were hard put to find it. <laughs> but it, it's great, and, and it's time. It is. It's time it's for the scholar. It's time. <laughs> you know, get out there yes, and it is. start creating. Come in and get some advice, and we'll yeah. help you create it. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Peggy's here, and we're doing container plantings. And I assure you that if you watch this segment, <laughs> and you follow Peggy's instructions. If you just take that time to do those few little things that she recommends, you're going to have a wonderful season of gardening because for each thing that she does, there's a reason, and you'll get the results from it. If you come into the garden center, we are there to help you <laughs> and give you the advice that you need and make you have a green thumb and get into gardening and really enjoy the results. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about. It is indeed. It is, and I've been doing this for so many years. Yeah. And, and, of course, there's no one way to do right. anything. What I'm sharing is the way I have done it. And I am perfectly willing to change if something better comes along. Right. But in the meantime, right. I've been doing this for a long time. Right. So first go on the gloves. 
and they are fox gloves. And if you're looking for an Easter gift, oh my goodness, isn't mm. I love purple and orange. The best. Anyway, you know? <laughs> they wash really well and they, they last do. forever. And, and the, yeah. the quality is just phenomenal. And you can feel. I, yeah. I, don't, um, I don't like gloves that I can't feel things. And these are, I've been using them now for years. And I like to pick up some of those little inexpensive throwaway plastic yes. things, whether it's Costco or yes. wherever, yes. you know. And if I'm working with really wet, I don't like to feel the wet, mm -hmm. I'll slip them on over this and not lose control of the touch. So we're going to talk about what do I do with these containers. It is important to define how much sun do you have, how much shade do you have, what is the look that you want, what are the colors that you want, what do you put together, and it can be just one plant in a container. It can be a grouping of containers, which I have a tendency to do a lot, and then use a single container mm -hmm. out in the landscape to draw to become your focal point. I've shown you only a few of the possibilities. There are a lot more, but you can only share so much. And I've also brought along a small pot, a smallish pot. And I'm not recommending a smaller spot, <laughs> okay? It's just because I can lift it. Your container should be large enough that you don't have to worry about keeping it watered, okay? If you chose a pot this small, you would really have to watch the watering. You must have drainage. Unless you're doing a water garden, you must have drainage. And I love to put a little piece of landscape fabric over that hole. That keeps the soil in and sometimes the little varmints out. And these landscape fabric comes on large rolls. And so to make it convenient for our customers, we cut it into smaller pieces. So exactly. do ask us about that. On top of this, I like to put a small amount of gravel, and I actually just brought along pea gravel, which is the most, the least expensive, perhaps, small gravel, and, and a good half an inch is enough. That helps hold that down and discourage. I've, I've had uh, voles actually come into a container before. It's amazing what they can get themselves into, but this is good, okay? And then fill that container with a good potting soil. We love our Maryfield potting soil, but there, there are two or three other really good. Promix is a good one. There are uh, Dr. Earth. There's two or three other really good potting soils. Cheap potting soil is not what you want because it, it does... It it's the foundation for that container, so <laughs> yeah, you need it. <laughs> so fill that container only to about an inch from the top, and there's reasons for that. You, when you water it, you don't want it to splash out, and if you fill it all the way to the top, it's very hard to water. Now, let's talk a little bit about fertilization. And there's many, many ways you can fertilize, okay? I have, over the past, um, used a combination of very natural products. And others say, well, that's too complicated for me. Well, it isn't complicated for me because I've got it down pat, okay? <laughs> and we do have some handouts. Garden gypsum, and these are all Espoma products. Garden gypsum is calcium and it's very important. When you're watering these containers, you're constantly watering the nutrients out. It's different than in the ground. Rock phosphate. This is a natural rock phosphate. It stays in the ground or in the container for long periods of time. Green sand, which is a lot of the micronutrients and is very good. These are all organic products. And then one that is called plantone. And if I'm doing, for instance, a 14 inch diameter, I'll probably put a tablespoon of each of these into it and mix it thoroughly into the bottom of that soil. Now, 
the most important thing that I do is use a product called Soil Moist. This is the same thing that's in baby diapers. Right. When it gets wet, it keeps that soil slightly moist. It never lets it go bone dry. It does not replace watering. It is an assistant with that. And so, again, in a 14-inch container, I would probably use at least, or probably a tablespoonful of this. Thoroughly mix it into that container. Plant your plants in. Again, being sure that it's held down from the top of this pot. And then you know what I do? I put an attractive gravel, and the pea gravel's fine. You can buy a large bag of this. It's the most economical way to do it. Put it in the bottom. Put it on the top. Put at least a half inch of this on top of the pot. And you say, why? Well, number one, it discourages the squirrels. I have a lot of squirrels. And they love fresh turned earth. And so they're more likely to get in and scratch around if you leave it bare. And so I cover it with the stones. Right. Now the other advantage is when you water this pot, the stones keep the soil in there. There's nothing more annoying than having that soil yes. wash out. Yes. You know? Yes. And so that's another good reason. I also like to put saucers underneath my containers, especially for the summertime when watering can be an issue. Right. It helps. It holds some, some moisture down there. Right, right. Not in the wintertime. Right, you right, take exactly. Take those saucers out in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. One more quick thing. Okay. One more. Okay. If you have hanging baskets, there are two things you can do, those that are bought from the store. There are little spikes that you can push down into, maybe using five spikes pushed into, which help with the watering because hanging baskets are a little bit more of a challenge to keep water. Or make pencil holes and, and filter in a few of these. You do not want to use this at the very top of the pot because you don't want it to wash out. Okay. Right, right. Very good. There are other fertilizers. Liquid fertilizer is fantastic. We do it at the garden center with both or the slow release Osmocot. All right, we're being told we have a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Peggy has brought in some material from the garden center that she picked up off the tables. And I have to tell you, looking at it close up, it is ready for television. I mean, it is perfection. It is just beautiful, beautiful no, it's, things. It's ready for the garden, and we're yeah. ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no it's, it's just time. stunning. In those that like the cool season, but alyssum is oh, so fragrant. It's just and you don't really have to put your nose down right to it to right. just get the fragrance. It comes through the air, and the annual house smells so good, partly because of alyssum. This one is a prolific bloomer. When it finishes blooming, if you just shear the tops of this with the good old Joyce, Joyce chin, chin. scissors, like so, It'll bloom again, wow. and chances are you can shear it and it'll bloom again. Wow. I've had it go through the summer. But look how pretty it is with um, the variegated. This this is wonderful. I, I love the Plectranthus, uh, the wonderful things. This is the Swedish Ivy Plectranthus, similar kinds of things. Beautiful. It look how it com combines even with this, the Silene. Now, this is a perennial, the silene. Beautiful, beautiful. Throwing into that a dark leaf one that'll take sunshine. This is another type of begonia. This is an old fashioned one. My mother used to grow these. It's a doubled begonia. But isn't that striking? Beautiful. All right, colors. let's sit that down for a second. Okay. I want to pick up, because not only is it annuals, but perennials. 
work beautifully in these containers mm -hmm. also. I showed you the saline. Here is, it's heavy, <laughs> a variegated agapanthus. Huh? And, and I do recommend growing this in a container because it's so lovely. I haven't tried this one. I do want to trial it to see how hardy is it. Yes. But look, you've got the strappy leaves. The contrast of the leaves is so interesting with this little saline that, that will spill out right, of that. Can, right. Isn't that lovely? It is lovely. And it's got a beefiness to it. I mean, it's got a, you know, the structure it is really good. It does. Set up there. And, and if I could get yeah. my hands and I don't know, I may create chaos. I'm good at that. All right. Okay. All right. We'll see what Come happens on. here. <laughs> Kimberly. Queen fern. Oh, this is yes. a tropical. It could be split into pieces. But look how lovely that is. A solid background of green. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. 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 You know, I never have enough time to share all the beauty of all these plants. But we are there for you to share our knowledge and we invite you. I'm going to the Fair Oaks location. Come in and meet all of our people. Come to any of our locations. We are prepared for you to do the best we can to help you make your selections. We, as Peggy said, we want to be there to help you. We just really just come in and we'll get you started or if you're, you know, already know, we'll help you along. Um, next week, uh, Peggy's going to be here. Be back. Dwarf small yes. container gardens. So that's one of her favorites. It's going to be very exciting. We look we'll forward to seeing you next week. You next week.